Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. Here's a little puzzle. If you take an hour to write an 800 word article, how long would it take to write 800 words for a book? One hour, right? After all, 800 words is 800 words, and why would it matter if the words are for a book or an article? Yet, if you're writing a book, you'll find that the very same 800 words might take three hours or four hours or five hours or even a couple of days. It's true even if you're very confident at writing and you know your material inside out. And the reason for this strange phenomenon lies in the concept of energy management. When you sit down and you're writing 800 words for a book, your brain is going back and forth. It's going back and forth about how the whole piece sits in the document. The words are not this standalone unit. They have to fit in with the information that came before, it has to fit in with what is to follow. And therefore, the simple act of changing the medium makes a massive difference to your speed and to your efficiency. And of course, to your energy. This is it. We're on episode number four of this series on writer's block on how the preparation itself can drive us so crazy that we end up with this block and it has nothing to do with our writing. We started out with the preparation, the outline, the notes, all of that stuff that needed to go right at the start that many of us think, oh, let's avoid this. It's not so critical. We know our stuff. And so we had the preparation. Second was the input. And in input, we looked at our own subject matter, which is our own industry. We looked at cross industries. We looked at different media. We looked also at styles, different styles. And finally, in input, we had discussion and feedback, without which we were just being secretive for something that was going to be public anyway. This takes us to energy. Energy isn't something that we think about when writing. Instead, we tend to worry about time. We tend to worry about how much time we have to do some assignment, some book, some article. However, we tend to run out of energy long before we run out of time. We get stuck. We can't get out of our predicament. And then we tend to believe that we are bad writers. We believe that others are more talented than us. This concept of talent is a perception. It's not a reality. And the reason for this is we can't sit and watch how writers, good writers, use their energy. Let's assume that you like the Psychotactics articles and you like the Psychotactics podcast. So let's look at the podcast itself. How do we go through the process of creating the podcast? First, I have to think up the topic. Then I have to outline the article. They have to write it. I have to edit it, send it to Grammarly, have their grammar check, post it for feedback, discuss it with Renuka or in 5000 BC, record it, edit it, add music. Well, Joe adds the music, Joe uploads it, and finally, Joe cues it as well. But I used to do all of that before. If I miss or slow down on one stage, it's enough to send the whole sequence in disarray. However, think of the energy and the planning required for any of those steps. There will be times when I think up the topic, I outline the article, I write it, I edit it, I grammar check, and then nothing happens. I run out of energy because I've tried to do the task in a bunched up manner. I then hit a wall and I can't go on. Of course, a few days later or a week later, I will pick up the thread of publishing the article, but all those energy peaks and crashes They drive you insane. They were driving me insane. 
I noticed something, that I was starting the article on Monday, and then I'd run out of energy, and then I'd outline on Tuesday, and then I'd do nothing else. And it might be a week before I got to the point where I was editing and uploading it. I was taking one week anyway. So why not spread that activity formally over the week? Take this very article that you're listening to right now, this podcast. I started this in the middle of last week. And then it progressed chapter by chapter, section by section, first episode, second episode. And all of this just took its own sweet time over the whole week. What this does is it keeps you alert for the specific activity that you want to do. So if you go and say, I'm only going to do the outlining, then you kind of allocate, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes for the outlining. And you know, okay, I need that much energy and I'm done. And the next time you're approaching something, say you're writing the entire article or say the first section of the article or the first and second section, in your head, you're allocating that energy and therefore you're able to do it at one go. But if you try and say, okay, let's do the outline, let's then put the notes in, let's start writing the article, let's get the headline, let's get the first 50 words, let's get... Now you've got to allocate energy beyond your understanding. And that's when it goes crazy. Breaking up every article into several different steps is extremely crucial. You always approach that step completely fresh, completely ready to take on that specific step and nothing else. You don't have to do anything else. The second thing that's very critical if you write a lot is to get help. Energy is not about playing superhero. Despite some very robust planning and confidence in writing, you can still run out of energy on a constant basis. This phenomenon plays out because we tend to take on more than we can handle. We take on these challenges all the time. When I started out with my articles, I'd write 500 word or maybe 800 word articles. They were a massive challenge. I barely exceeded the 800 word limit for close to 14 years. Then in 2014, I decided to restart the podcast. Now, a podcast is about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. A person tends to speak at about three words a second, which means that a podcast of 30 minutes has to have about four and a half thousand, no wait, 5,400 words. Five and a half thousand words approximately. It could be 4,000, it could be 3,000, still a lot of words. And this exercise drove me crazy. It burned me up for months, even several years. The first problem was just the massive leap between 800 to 3,000 or 5,000 words. That was so much, so much work. Plus, as we addressed earlier in this piece, it wasn't just a factor of words. 800 words as a standalone isn't 800 words as part of a bigger picture. So this bigger picture was the podcast. It wasn't just, oh, wait, we'll write 800 words and we'll stop. 800 words was a part of 3,000 words, or 800 words was a part of 5,000 words. And then there was this issue of adding music, of learning software, of setting up recording equipment. I need to take a deep sigh here. I needed help on almost every front, but I also realized that I couldn't do it all. I had to give up one of the most coveted pieces of my podcast production. If there was one thing that I loved most of all, it was putting the music on the podcast. But I needed this energy to conceptualize, to write, to edit, to record, which is where Joe Norton came in. And now he creates all of the magical music on this podcast. He puts in all those sound effects, all that stuff that makes you think, wow, this podcast is different. Well, that's what Joe does. He also uploads everything and then he cues it. And all of this is a massive relief to me. At this point in the article, you're probably wondering, why am I telling you the story of this podcast? And the reason is whether you write an article for a podcast or whether it's part of a course or the book, the concept is quite similar. At first, it's pure madness because you're juggling so many things all at once. You're writing, you're researching, you're editing, you're style formatting, uploading, you're finding a graphic, you're queuing your article. 
that's all part of every single article that you're going to write. If you put it on your website, then your newsletter, well, there's more work to be done. All of this energy that you're putting into the article is energy that you're burning up. Energy that you've put in all of these steps. So when you say, I have writer's block, well, could it be that you have so many steps to do, but by the end of it, you're just burnt out and then you have to start the process all over again. When people talk about writer's block, they're only talking about writing, but there are all of these other elements around it, which is publishing and graphics and editing and grammar and whatever else you're doing with it, whether you're putting in a report or a podcast or a book, there's all these other things that you're doing and they're all taking energy and they're all sucking up that energy to the point where you're kind of out of energy. And this is where it gets very insidious because now you're so exhausted that you don't have time to read. You're too tired to listen to any podcast. You don't want to listen to any more information when your brain is already fried. This means that one of the critical areas, which is the input, which is what we covered in podcasts three and four, episode three and four of this series, that entire chunk has gone away. You don't want any feedback. Your energy is already low. What are they going to do when they give you feedback? They're going to tear up your article, aren't they? What are you going to do in that discussion? You don't have much to say. You're so tired. And if you're running into writer's block, there's probably a very good reason. And it's that you just don't have the energy to do every single thing. The various steps involved in getting a single article can drain you completely. It's not all about skill or preparation. It's also about managing your energy. And this is why you might want to get some help. Now, maybe you can't pay for this help, you know, get a professional, but you might have a student body that might have students who will pitch in. A client may want to help. We have clients who have pitched in to help us to publish articles on the blog, to put it on Aweber, to do all that stuff. Clients have pitched in. Kids pitch in. You might have kids in the neighborhood who are more than capable of doing some of the tasks instead of you doing everything back to back. Most of us don't realize how energy intensive this entire process is. We only look at the writing and writing is just one part of the whole thing. It might seem like writing 800 words is just writing 800 words. Logically, your planning should take no more than 30 minutes. The article should take no more than 90 minutes from start to finish. But that's not how it works in real life. You stagger, you fall, you get stuck. A big chunk of that blame lies with the way that we manage our energy and how we try to do every single step of the activity. Doing it that way is unsustainable. So here's what you need to do instead. Plan your topics in advance. Get your outlines done on another day. Make sure that your research has been stored away ready to use. And then you start to write the article. Edit it later, like on another day, two days from now. If you can, give the rest of the work to a friend, to a client, or someone else. You know, the other bits and pieces that involve uploading, putting graphics, formatting the text. Things that you can then just give somebody else to do if possible. Outsourcing isn't just about fobbing away the parts that are uninteresting. To me, the music was the most exciting of all. It was more exciting than the narration. However, Joe does a far superior job than I ever did and he keeps getting better all the time. And as a result, my writing has got better. This is the reason why I'm saying, okay, we're here in October and I'm planning and have a lot of the stuff ready to the end of March. I didn't have that energy. I couldn't have that energy if I tried to do it all myself. And this is the whole point. The point is that you cannot do it all by yourself. There is no such thing as a solo venture. You have to somehow 
find a way to give some of the work away, even if you love it most of all. And this brings us to the end of this episode and to the end of the series. Let's summarize what we've covered in this series. We started out with pre-work. You have to put in that outline. You have to make notes, otherwise you forget what you were writing. And then when you have to write, maybe three days later, five days later, you might forget what the whole thing was about. So pre-work looks like a barrier. And if you don't outline, you're just slowing down everything for yourself. So that was the first episode. And in the second episode, we looked at input. Second and third episode, we looked at input. Input comes from many sources. It comes from your own industry. It comes from general knowledge. But it also comes from different media. It comes from audio and video and text, and it's more than likely that it's stored in different parts of your brain. So it's kind of activating different parts of your brain, and that leads to a level of creativity that you're not going to get if you just stick to one source. There's also the factor of styles. and You want to listen to four or five podcasts, read four or five newsletters, and kind of less is more that applies in most things in life, and I can assure you it applies here as well. And that brought us to a very critical point in input, which was discussion and feedback, which is don't keep stuff secretive. Really don't. Send it out there, get into a discussion, explain yourself, get feedback, and it makes your writing not just easier, but quicker. You're not going to get better by sitting by yourself, trying to figure out everything by yourself. It's just like digging a hole and making the hole deeper and deeper. You might have succeeded before, but try this. And this takes us to the last part, which is energy. Understanding that writing 800 words for an article is not the same thing as writing 800 words for a book. The more steps that are required in the whole process, the more you're going to burn energy. And you're going to have to plan the steps, but also to get help. Because it's not just about the writing, it's all that stuff around the writing that causes the trouble. And if you're tired, that kills the input as well, and now we have no outline. <laughs> it's a complete recipe for disaster. And I know I shouldn't laugh, but I'm not laughing at you. I'm almost thinking of myself and how I got myself into a mess all of these years and didn't realize these things, which is why I wrote this article. But what's the one thing that you can do? I'd say the one thing that you can do is to look at the whole cycle of writing. What are the steps that you're taking? Are you breaking up everything so that you have more energy? And finally, are you getting some help from, I don't know, some neighborhood kids or someone who can help you? Because that is going to free up time and when you have more free time, you're able to put better work out. You're able to read more, learn more, discuss more, and more importantly, have the energy to take feedback. All of this ends up in this big energy hole that we've created. And if we don't manage that hole, then we can never be writers. It's not about writer's block. It's about understanding the process of writing. And that's what we've covered in this episode, in these four episodes and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, send me an email. I will read your email and I will respond. I always respond to all the emails. That's me, Sean D'Souza, saying bye for now. But wait, what's happening in Psychotactics Land? About a month ago, we recorded a series called The Psychology of Starting Up. Now you'd wonder, why psychology? Is there not some kind of button that you could press so that you could start up a business? And a lot of it is all in your head. You've probably gone through this already. You're wondering, what should I start up? How should I start up? How do I know what's the right idea to have? What kind of business am I going to run? All of these ideas, all of these thoughts, they bounce around in your brain, and you're not able to sort it out. And the obvious solution seems to be when someone says that they will make you rich, and they will make you popular, and then you can have thousands of great fans and clients. And you buy that product, and you get stuck. And that's because the root of everything is our thought. 
we start off with how do we get to this point and then when how we get to another point and so it ends up being psychology or rather it starts with psychology if you don't get the thinking right which is what's in your head but also how to think through the process of starting up a business of starting up a project then you struggle and on this series we've had people who've had a business have a business but also those who've not had a business and are starting on that journey so that's coming up the psychology of starting up and it's going to be mid july so look out for that and you'll find that it's the most sane advice that you're going to get rather than all of this push this button and this happens advice which doesn't work you just waste time you just waste money you just waste energy On another front, if you want to make smaller changes, there's psychotactics.com/tiny. That's T I N Y. And you get all of these tiny products that you can make very tiny but very useful changes to your website. Very useful changes to your marketing. So go check out psychotactics.com/tiny. And as always, we'd love to have you in 5000 BC. It's a membership site. But you can ask all the questions that you would ask a coach and you would get answers and a coach would cost you anywhere from 1500 to 2500 every month and you couldn't go back to the coach every single day or twice a day or thrice a day and that's what you can do in 5000 BC and you can do that for the tiniest fraction you can't imagine how little you'd have to pay for a year long membership of 5000 BC but go there read the page decide for yourself don't take my word for it. Decide for yourself. That's 5000BC.com. And that's it from Psychotactics Land. I'll say bye for now and see you in 5000 BC. Bye-bye. Still listening? One of the things that you have to do to save energy is to kind of do these things, which is the rerun. We're in the second out of six reruns. And... It's not always important to create new content. A lot of people think that you have to create new content. But if you've noticed with the podcast, we've had longer pieces. We've had mid-sized pieces. We've had really short podcasts. And then we have reruns. And sometimes just this energy that you're saving can then be used to rest. And rest is a very crucial thing. It's not about just go out and create more and get more Rest allows your brain to think and then also to be able to create stuff which enables more clients to come in, better clients to come in. It enables you to do better work, which is the most crucial thing of all, because once you start doing better work, you automatically get better clients and you get better prices. The primary reason why we had the reruns is because we go on holiday and then there's no point if you're working on holiday there's no point in taking a computer and sitting at the beach and typing away when everyone's enjoying themselves. We're not on holiday. No one is on holiday. But even so, the rerun principle still applies. And if you can segregate your writing or any kind of creation into these four sections, which is large, medium, tiny, and rerun, you'll find that you have more energy to do other stuff. And we all need more energy. So that's me saying bye for now. Bye-bye.